Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for attending our webinar today. Today is March 19th, 2014, and this is Quote Roller 101. In this webinar, we'll go into the overview of the Quote Roller system, how to set it up, create proposals for your clients, uh, so you can, and you can use the Quote Roller system to the fullest benefit. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll open up to a live uh, Q&A session using the GoToMeeting uh, questions and answer thing. So uh, once we get to that point, please go ahead and uh, ask your questions. My name is James, and I'm the customer support manager here at Quote Roller. And uh, let's go ahead and begin. So first at the top at QuoteRoller.com, we have a lot of great information out here, including our features, the different things that we can do with the system, um, and our different integrations that we have. A pricing page that we have about the four different plans that we have, including monthly and annual pricing. Our fantastic resources page, which I really recommend that you do. We have a lot of great information and resources out here about how to use that. Uh, the template section, these are the public templates that are available inside of your quote roller accounts. So you can kind of get a visual representation of that. And then finally, our blog. Uh, There's a lot of great content. We post this weekly or bi-weekly um, with new enhancements we got going on in the systems, uh, general how-to stuff, um, how to create the pr proposals and a lot of other business and ideas and all that type of stuff. So please definitely go out there and sign up for our newsletters and get up-to-date with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and log into QuoteRoller.com, and here we are on the dashboard. And what the dashboard is, this will give you an overview by um, a time period, such as week, three week, month, three months, or a year, and it breaks this down for your proposals by status. So inside of the Quote Roller system, when you create a proposal is considered a draft, then when you send a proposal is considered a sent, and then we have multiple subcategories underneath that, which we'll talk about a little bit as well. When you click on each one of these, they also show you the number of proposals within that, so you can view the proposal, look at the total cost, who created it, when it was sent, and the current status as well. Below that, we have all story stats, just kind of give you a pie graph and uh, basically break down the account of uh, where your proposals are and which status they're in. We have the proposal funnel, which will kind of give you a, a upside-down uh, pyramid here. We'll break it down, how many of you sent, how many viewed, and accepted. And then down at the bottom here, we also have a wizard, or excuse me, not a wizard, but a history, excuse me, that will break this down and show you what's going on with your proposals, uh, when they've been updated, when they've been sent, and so forth, and provides you a date time stamp as well. So very at the top of the screen here, the very first thing we're going to talk about are clients. And clients, of course, of who you're sending this information to, your potential business, right? And we have multiple different ways we can add clients into the system. First, we can add a new client, which I'll show in a little bit. But more importantly, on here on the left-hand side, we have import contacts. And when you click on that, this will see the number of different integrations that you have that you can sync that contacts from that system over to our system. But also down at the bottom here, we do also have the... Um, uh, CSV file. So if you have that information to an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV, you can import that into your quote roller account. So I'm going to go back up to all companies real quick here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on add a new client. Now inside the quote roller system, quote roller is really, is really branded, really designed for business to business. So you need, so the four fields that are really required for information to send out to your customer is a company name, and then we have first name, last name, and email address, the primary contact who is going to be associated with that company. Now, we recommend that you have all the information filled out because you can use some of that for tokens, which we'll talk about. Um, so think about how you want to set up your clients. I'm going to hit cancel real quick, real quick here and go back to my all companies. And then I'm going to click on edit next to one company. So when you go into the edit of it, you'll see all the information, who this company is, all the information. But over on the right-hand side, of course, you can have multiple contacts per individual company as well. So you can send that one proposal out, let's say, to five or six people within the same organization if it's something that you wanted to do. So clients are a really good way, and this is the really first thing that I start off uh, suggest people to do is get some of this information in there. If, you, uh, if you're new to Quote Roller, uh, what I recommend is add yourself as a client as well, so you can send some uh, test proposals to yourself as well. The next thing we want to talk about is the catalog. And the catalog is a way to, you're going to define in the information of what you're selling to your customers. 
So in the inside of the quote roller system under catalog, we have three different types of catalog items that you can create. We have services, products, and subscriptions, and we'll talk about each one of these. A service is defined as a name, a price, a quantity in a unit, such as per page, per service, per hour, per month, so forth, and a description. Products, they're defined as a name, any price, and a description. And then subscriptions, they're defined as a name, a price, and a period. And the difference between a subscription period and a, and a services unit is that a subscriptions are really designed for um, services or uh, work after original quote is over. So, for example, here I have created a subscription called monthly website update. And when I included this item into my, my proposal, it will show that what I'm going to be doing is that if they choose this option, it's $50 per month. So you can kind of think about how you want to do that if you have those types of options within your business plan. Within each of the catalog item types, you also have categories that you can set. And a category is a way to help filter out information if you want to, when you want to use these items inside of your proposals. So for example here, under my services, I created a category called social media. And when I click on social media, only my social me media uh, services will show up. So think about using categories. It's really a great way for, uh, to help filter your information out. Next is we have a price list. And a price list, what, it, what that is, that is a, it can be a combination of services, products, and su subscriptions. So let's say, for example, you have a product line that you're always be sending out to your customers. Well, instead of manually adding all that information into your proposal, you can create a price list. Let me show you an example real quick what that looks like. So this is a price list. What you can do is give it a name. You can be very descriptive of what this price list entails. You can set up your discount types, your tax types, and your currencies. And then you'll see the whole bunch of different items that I added within my services and one in product and so forth. So think about using price lists as a really, really great way to save time. Or if you're dealing with within a sales environment where your salespeople are going to be using the system to send out quotes, Think about using price lists to, auto, to help them save time by auto-populated information. And we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Next is we have taxes. Inside of taxes, of course, we have give it a name of a tax and the tax rate. And what you want to do is make sure you have one set as your default. And then we have settings. And in settings, we have a couple different options, which we'll talk about. The first is the en enable image option. So I'm going to enable that. And what that's going to do, that's going to have an option to include pictures next to my catalog item types. Um, however, this will only show on the web version of the proposal, not the PDF. Below that here, of course, we have services units. So these are all the defaulted units that we have with inside of your system. However, you can create your own if none of these work for your environment. And below that, we have subscriptions period. And once again, here's the defaulted ones. However, you can always, always add your own as well. So I'm going to go back up to services real quick here, and now you're going to see all my images that have showed up because I've enabled that option. Well, if I edit this item again, what you have here, this, this option opens up. It says choose file. And this is where you can choose a file from your computer and upload it as that individual um, picture that shows up next to that. So think about using that. It's a really, really great feature and to professionalize your web version of the proposal. So think about this catalog, you know, catalog and services and products and subscriptions and how you want to use that and how you want to set up your account. So there will be lots of different ways in order to provide information, provide what you're trying to sell out to your clients. So first, of course, we, we talked about the clients of who we're sending out to, and then we talked about the catalog of what we're selling. The next thing we really need to talk about are the templates. And in templates, of course, this is how you can define your information that you want to be selling out to your customers. So first is we have all templates. Remember when we first talked about QuoteRoller.com, we had templates at the top of the screen. Well, that is a visual representation of all these templates that you have here. Now, you can use uh, all of them right out the gate if you want to, or you can add them to your account and modify them for your needs, or you simply don't have to use them all if you don't want to at all. But definitely take a look at that. It might be able to help you save some time or at least give you some ideas of what you would like inside of your template for your proposals. So I'm going to go back to my templates here, and I'm going to click on the Quote Roller Proposal Template, because that's the one we're working on today. And what we're looking at here now is something called the Template Overview. And what this is going to do is provide you all the information that you can do about this individual template. 
and we'll talk about some of these options here. First is the edit content option. And this is how you're going to define the information that's going to be displayed inside of your, your proposal. So first, at the top of the screen, you can have template name. You can call this whatever that you like. You, we do not have a limit on the number of templates you can have. So you can have multiple different ones, different variations or versions of them even. Um, and then over here on the right-hand side, what we have are things called sections. And think of sections as pages within a proposal. So what you see here is I created four sections called introduction, about us, fees and terms and conditions, and you can always add more. You can always move them up and down as you will, as that too. And then within each section, we need to build content that is explained by using things called the content blocks that are right here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I've added or added this block here, this text block, and I'm going to edit this block. And then what you're going to see here is all the things we can do with this. Now, when using a text block, this will show up on the web version and on the PDF version. So right up on top here, we have a name of the block itself. I call it an overview. However, if you don't want to show that, you can always hide or disable that as well. And then we have the editor. First is we have all the text that you can type in. So if you can type this, in, type this text in or if you're copying in from another source, just as a text document or a Word or PDF document, this I would recommend using those options. Uh, so lots of different ways of uh, having that information there. These, th these yellow things here that you see there, well, these things are called tokens. And what tokens are, these are a way to auto-fill in information. So you don't have to retype it in. So you can use one template for all of your clients. So we have four different options here, four different tabs. We have sender, which is all your information that you would want to include. We have your client information, such as their full name or the company name. We have the pricing information, including the totals and grand totals and all those sorts of, as well. And then we have proposals, such as the name of the proposal or even the quote number or even the current date. So think about using tokens as a way to save time as well. With, uh, with also that you have within the editor, of course, you can upload images. And the way that you would do, this, do that is to check this box or click this button right here called image. You choose it from your computer, upload it, and they can change with different sizes and so forth. We have tables. So if you ever want to create your own table, you can do that as well by using the table button. We have hyperlinking options. So if you ever need to link to your, another website or maybe to your social media and all those types of things as well, all you would have to do is highlight a piece of text or an image and click on the link button, add your link, and uh, it's a really great way to provide that information to your clients. So lots of great things you can do with inside of this editor. Uh, pretty much sky's the limit, everything from bold and italics to underscores to uh, different formatting resolution si formatting sizes, and we have uh, bullet points and number points and all that. So lots of different tools in there. I'm going to go to the About Us section real quick here. I'm going to show you some of these other options. The next is the gallery option, which looks like this. And what the gallery option does, this allows you to upload a high-definition high definition image that will be displayed on the web version of the proposal. And once you upload it, what's going to do is going to look like this. So when a person clicks on that, a large version or a large window will come up. Along that, of course, you have the PDF content because we cannot show those files. That's why we have PDF content only where you can link it to uh, the proposal or you can even put a small little image in there if you wanted to. Next is we have the HTML presentation. This is the HTML block. And this is a really great way if you're an HTML guru, you can create your own pictures and your own code and your own text that will show on the web version. Or it's a really good option for us that you can use it to embed services from another website or another service out there. So, for example, I've included a PowerPoint presentation that, we, that our CEO, Makita, created on slideshare.net. And what I did is I took that code and embedded it into my proposal, or my template, excuse me. So when they see this, all they have to do is just click on the next ones to go through that type of presentation. So think about using that if you use any of those types of services, if you want to embed that within your proposals, of course. Below that, we have video, of course, is the video block. And what we're seeing here is a YouTube video that I have embedded within, the, within this block. Once again, when you give it a name, you drop in the embed code. You can also have the PDF content as well. 
And video is a really, really a fantastic option to show off or even to professionalize the proposals that you can be sending out to your clients. You know, anything from your about us, from where you are, maybe it's examples you've done in the past or your staff. Um, people really like to have that feeling. And uh, so video, video is a really, really a great way to um, spice up and professionalize it. I'm going to the fees section real quick here. In the fees section, there's a couple of things we need to talk about. First is the price table. And this is one, t one block that you do need in order to show the pricing information as this is the placeholder. Once you've added the pricing table, we have a couple different layout uh, options to show your pricing table. First is we have the default layout that looks like this. And this will show all the images that you included with them. And then the name and description, price and quantity and subtotal. Plus, this is also con uh, the top portion here where you see the services and this uh, header bar up here. This is also configurable within some settings, which we'll talk about real quick. The other option, of course, is the simple layout that looks like this. Let's give it a few seconds to get all updated here. Here we go. And this is really a stripped down version of the pricing table. So you don't have the option for images. Really, it's straightforward of what you can uh, put that information in there. I personally like the, the, the default one for the simple fact you have more options and things to play with that as well. Below that, of course, we have the PayPal block, which is right here. And this is uh, an option if you do have a PayPal account and do would like to get paid for uh, the prepayment or even a payment after the accept the quote, all you would have to do is just type in the name of the block itself, type in your email address of who is getting paid and the dollar amount associated with that and then the currency. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about a little more how about that works. But and a great option if you're looking for payments. Finally, the terms and conditions, of course. Here's some more inf uh, text blocks I dropped in here. But we also have a signature block, and that's this one right here. And what the signature block is is that if you're using the quote roller e-signature option, wherever you have the signature block throughout your sections, that their signature will go. Most people do. They just have a simple the signature block at the end of the proposal. However, um, you can put it in multiple different places. If you wanted to add your own signature at this time, what you'd have to do is create your signature on your computer, save it as an image, and include it as a text content. Before we head on to the next section, another great piece that we have available within our system is called the Content Library. And what the Content Library does is a way to save information to be used, save content of information to be used again and again. And we can do that with the text block, the gallery, the HTML, and the video block. So let's say, for example, we have this uh, text block that we really like, really built, and we want to use it again. Well, we have a button here. It's called Add to Library. And when you click on that button, then it will be added to the, to the content library, which can be used. So let's say, for example, we're in another proposal or another template. All we would have to do is click on the Add button, and it drops right in here. See how that works? So think about using a content library. It's a really great feature, a really great way to save time as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that because we don't want to have two of them on there. And I'm going to cancel here just because we're not making any changes. So that's the edit content section. Lots of different ways in order to provide content, to show content, to professionalize your proposals. The other thing we want to talk about is this option called change design. And what this does, <clears throat> unlike the edit content where you put in your information of what you want to say, the edit con the change design, excuse me, is all about the look and the feel of what your proposals are going to look like. So first on the upper left hand side we have web theme. Two options we have right now is the classic view and modern view. I'm going to switch this to classic view to kind of show you what this looks like. You'll have your table of contents on the right-hand side. You have one green accept proposal button plus the small buttons here at the top. But what's nice about this, this version, though, is that this background color here is you can change this within your settings to maybe match up with your branding. The other option is the modern view, and that's what this one looks like. So we have the table of contents on the left-hand side, two big green uh, accept proposal buttons, Plus, we have the Discuss button at the button top as well. However, this one is a little bit less configurable for the colors-wise. Below that, we have the PDF themes. Think of the PDF themes as color combinations. We have a whole bunch of different options in here, or you can create your own as well. We have PDF page backgrounds. So let's say, for example, you wanted your own custom cover page for your PDF. You can upload an image 
uh, for that to show that. You can also do it with the inner pages on the PDF as well. If you have any questions about that, please reach out to us. Below that, we have the PDF settings here. We have a couple of different options, including show document header. That's going to be the proposal name to show up on the upper right. We have the document footer, which is going to provide a gray line in the number of the page at the bottom of the PDF. We have the show logo on cover page. So under settings, if you upload your own logo, you can check this box to show it on the PDF version. However, it's going to be a kind of a small uh, image. That's why we suggest create your own custom cover page. And then, of course, we have the option where you don't have to show the cover page at all. And then finally, we have all these different options in here to modify the color, the size, and the style of font for these different things. The first is the document caption. And that is going to be the name of the proposal on the PDF. We have the document meta, which is going to be the prepared for and created by information that shows up on the PDF. We have the section headers. This will, show, this will change and modify the information that is shown for the section headers on the web and the PDF, such as, remember these, uh, the four section I created called introduction? Well, this is how you can modify that information for here. We have the block headers. Remember this one text block I had? Here's called the text block header. You can modify and change that as well. Below that, of course, we have the text uh, options. These are all the text that we've added, right? So you can modify that as well. Below that, we have table headers. This is the uh, pricing table. You can modify the color of services, products, or subscriptions in the background color choice. And then finally, we have edit custom CSS. So if you're a, uh, a CSS guru, are uh, certainly welcome to play around and use in different options. Uh, what this is primarily used for is to remove options from the pricing table. However, it can be used in a number of different fashions. You're certainly welcome to give it a try. However, the only thing that we do recommend is that if you do make any changes to custom CSS, always click Save and Apply, and then always download PDF just in case that makes sure that works properly. So lots of different options within the change design. Definitely go around here, play around with it, check it out, maybe try out some different options, lots of different things you can do. So I'm going to go back to my template overview. So we talked about clients, of course, of who we're sending the information to. We talked about the catalog of how we're, what information or what services we're selling. And then we talked about the templates, including what the look and the, feel, the content that we're adding, including the look and feel of it. Plus, we also talked about the content library of how we can use that. And within the library option up here, what this will do is this new feature we added this week, and this will give you some uh, the, the content library that you added for text, video, and HTML. And you can modify this information here right on the fly instead of now going into a template. Um, there's more things that are coming to this, um, but when you do have some time, definitely take a look at that as well. So now because we've gone through clients and catalog templates, we have everything that we need in order to create an amazing looking proposal. So I'm gonna we will click on proposals here at the top. Remember we first talked about how quote roller proposals are defined by status, right? So in, the, in draft, this is all my uh, proposals that I have not sent out. So when you create a proposal, it is considered a draft. When you send the proposal out, it's considered a sent. But then we have subcategories, including viewed, so that marks when it's your cu customer views it. We have accepted when they accepted the proposal. We have declined when they have declined the proposal. We have in discussion. That means when your customer contacts you, use the discuss button. It will show up in here. We have the expired proposals. That means if you set up the expiration date and then the expiration date passes, they will show up in here. And then we have archive. And what archive is really used for is to, remove, is to move sent items to your archive. So you do not want, along, want them to no longer show up within your sent, but archive within your account so they'll always be available. You would never, ever want to delete a proposal unless it's maybe a demo proposal or a sample proposal. It's always best just to simply archive them after they have been sent or accepted and defined. So I'm going to go and click on Create a Proposal. And our proposal process is very simple, steps one through four. So the very first step we need to do is give it a name. Next is we need to choose a template. So you can start off with a blank proposal if you haven't gone through templates. Or you can use the drop-down arrow. And these will load up all the templates that we have. First is the, all those templates. Remember, all those public templates, you can use them right from here. Or if you scroll back at the top, we have My Templates. So these are all the templates that, that you have within your account or maybe ones that you've been working on. 
So I'm going to click on the template that I've been, uh, we've been working on today. On the lower left, we have send from, of course. So this is who this is coming from. So this is me. And then we have the send to. So this is our part of our clients. Now, you can add them manually from here, or you can simply, if you add them in clients already, all you have to do is just type in the first few letters of it, check it, and there they are. So here we have two contacts that are associated with this company. And we have this check, so this person will get it. But if we want to, for Bobby, for example, to also get this, all we would have to do is check that, and you'll also get their version of the proposal as well. So I'm just going to do check the box for Sean, and then we're going to next step, which is step two. Step two, of course, is the pricing table. We have a couple different ways of adding information. First, we click on Add a Service. You can manually type information in. And you can modify the price and the unit and the quantity and description. Or you can use the drop-down arrow to use the ones selected from uh, uh, the catalog. Drop that in there. Or you can use the search option. So when, ha when this opens up, you can search for an item that you have. Or this is a really good reason to add your catalog, uh, catalog categories. It helps uh, filter that information out. Let's say if you want to add one, all you have to do is click on the name, and there it is. Along with all these different options, we have Mark as Optional. And what this does, this will allow your client to choose this item when they're viewing the proposal. So let's say, for example, you had a product A, product B, and product C, and you wanted one of your, your clients to choose one of those items. Well, what I suggest that you do is mark that as Optional, and they can choose one of those items. The other option here is called Quantity Edible. And what this will do is allow your client to update the quantity. If, they want, if you want to give them the option to do that. I'm going to hit save real quick here. So here's my, here's my uh, service that I've added, including the picture that I've used. Then over here on the right, we have pricing table settings. First is we have discount type. We have total discount, which is going to be included at the bottom. So this will affect the entire table. And then we have line item discount, which you can set up per individual line item by a percentage. We have tax type. First, we have total tax, which is configurable either by a fixed or a percentage. Or we have line item tax that you can set up individual taxes per individual line item. We have currency, of course. If you're dealing with customers outside in the United States, you can set that for their currency. Or for our quote roller customers that are not in uh, the United States, you can also set up for your currency as well. Below that, then, of course, we have the pricing list. So remember when we talked about the catalog price list of adding that information? So now you can, you can go through here and build your own and then add this to the pricing list. Or if you got through the catalog price list, you can choose one that we already have created. So watch what happens when I choose this one. few seconds load and here we go and you'll see it be automatically populated so think about using price lists is a way to help you save time during the long run or if you're in a sales environment with your salespeople all they would have to do is just click on the one and then automatically gets added into it of course is after you add a price list you can go here and modify any information that you need as well so all those options are still there so next is the next step, which is step uh, three, the edit section. And in step three, of course, this is the template that we've chosen. So you might say, hey, this looks like the same type of content. Well, that's right. It, um, so when we chose that template, step, step one, all this information is automatically imported into this individual proposal. And the reasons why we have it editable, of course, is because maybe you need to modify some information for the specific proposal or for the specific client. However, if you use tokens, right, so for in introductions or maybe in salutations, think of using tokens to auto-fill in that information so you not have to manually modify that information each and every single time. And it works the exact same way as the templates edit content does. You can use things from the content library, you can bring over blocks, all that information is there for you as well. Finally, step four, which is the finalized section. In step four, we have all the different options that we can do about this end of our proposal. We can, we'll talk about all of those. We scroll down here at the bottom here, we have proposal options. First is we have the enable generate PDF version. So if you want to enable or disable that, you can do that from there. We have the enable e-signature option. So if you want to use a quote roller e-signature, you can do that as well. 
We also have an integration with Write Signature if you want to include that. We have Enable Password Protect. So if you want to, if you're dealing with a secure type of environment and you want to provide a password to that, you can do that as well. However, you just need to provide that information to your client so they can access it. And then we have set proposal expiration date. So when you turn this on, this will automatically set it to one month out. However, you can modify this as you wish. And then what happens is that between now and this date, your proposal will be considered active and your client will be able to view it. However, if the expiration date passes, um, it would be then considered an expired proposal and your client would not be able to view it. Finally, we have the, the option for enable expiration re date reminder. So if you set this up, this will send an email to your client three days before the expiration date. And then finally, we have attached files. So here's where you, you can upload a different attachments such as zip files or maybe a large marketing document that is really graphic heavy to this proposal. And what this will be allow you to do is for your client to, to click on that, those files to download them directly from the proposal. Lots of different ways you can think about doing that. Back here, back here at the top, of course, we have send to. Of course, who uh, who this is uh, this proposal is going to. So if you have multiple people, all they would show up here. And then we have this message. And, and when you send this proposal out, this is the message that will be sent out. However, it's configurable uh, per individual message or per a global setting as well. Then we have the buttons first, so we have preview the proposal. So when you click on this, this will give you an exact replica of what your client will see. Then we have send the proposal button, of course. This will send out this proposal to this and save it to the sent status, plus send out this email message. The drop-down arrow, we have save as draft. So if you go through the entire proposal process but not ready to send it out, always make sure you go down here and click save as draft. And then, of course, we have Save as Sent, and what that does, this will send out, this will change the proposal from a draft to a sent status, but does not email this message out. And the real reason that this option is here, let's say, for example, you send the proposal out, but then you realize that you forgot to change something to the proposal. Well, what you would have to do is edit the proposal, make your change, and then go back and use the Save as Sent option. And the reason why you want to do that is because from your point of view, the proposal has been uh, changed, but from your client's point of view, because you did not email them a second time, nothing has changed. So all, for our purposes here, I'm going to go and click on Save as Sent. So we're changing this from a draft to a sent proposal, and now it's going to be viewable and accessible. So here we are on the proposal overview, which kind of breaks it down of who created it, when it was sent, the current status, and total cost, and we'll talk about a little bit more of this. Over here on the right-hand side, we have, of course, send from and send to. And I'm going to click on copy this link to proposal, and I'm going to open that up and show you the proposal that we have created today. So here we are now. So you got to think about this is as from the client's point of view, what they're going to see when they open up your proposal. So because we use the modern template. This is the information that we define. So there are table contents is on the left-hand side. We have our four sections that we have created. First is we have the Discuss button. So if your client wants to contact you about this proposal, all they would have to do is click on Discuss, type in, type in a message. And then they click Post. And what's going to happen is that once they do this, you're going to receive an email to view this, and then you can contact them back. I'm going to go back to the proposal real quick here. So let's go through all the different options here. So first is the, inter uh, the introduction we've created. So here's the image that we've created. Here is the table that I have set up and the hyperlink, of course. Next is the About Us section. So remember that one block we call the gallery block. So when I, what happens is that they'll see this picture here, and when they click on that picture, a large version will show up. I'll show what that looks like. So there's an example of that. People like high-definition images, especially maybe for previous examples you've done in the past, pictures of your uh, things that you're selling and so forth. Next is we have that HTML presentation I was telling you about. A few seconds here, we get to load. Here's that here. <clears throat> so the, 
the, the whole idea about doing this or adding content so they don't have to go out to another website. They don't have to go on to open up a, another browser or window or anything. All right here within the proposal. So here's an example of that slide share that we have. Then the video that I've automatically embedded in through YouTube, all they would have to do is click play. And then it plays the video right for them. So once again, it's all about giving them information right within this proposal window, not sending them to different websites or having them clicking on different things. Everything is right here. Next is the fees section that we've created. So here's the pricing table that we have created. So uh, you'll see that I modify the, 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 the services, I modify the color in the background. We have the images that I've uploaded, plus we have all the information like name, description, price, quantity, and subtotal. Remember that optional item that I was telling you about? So what happens is here, let's say we want this person want to include this keyboard as part of this proposal. And you'll see this is this $50 is grayed out plus the subtotal is blank. So if they wanted the keyboard option, all they would have to do is check the box. The table automatically updates. It updates to puts this in black and then puts in the subtotal. And then we have all the quantity edible option. So all you would have to do, let's say they wanted 10 keyboards. All they would have to do is type in the number. Click update, and there it is right there. So think about using optional, and think about using the quantity edible if that suits your business business needs. Below that here, of course, here's that PayPal block that we have. So if we want, if you wanted your client to make that, or we want to make this payment, all we would have to do is click on that box, click on that pay with PayPal. It opens up to the PayPal options. They log in with your account, make the payment. And then once that's been processed, this will be uh, set up as paid or uh, processed payments or payment has been paid. So that's an option that will show up in there. Finally, we have the terms and conditions. And, of course, here's a little more text information. But the reason I wanted to show you this is that one of the things I found um, about some proposals that I sent out to is that they didn't know what to do next. You know, they really like to propose, they, they really want to continue uh, with use of my services, but they didn't know what to do. So there's nothing wrong with providing some instruction to your customer of what to do, or maybe even how to use the table of contents. So let's say, for example, you were providing a little instruction here that if you agree to this proposal and ready to continue to the next steps, please click on the green Accept Proposal button. You're just providing them a little bit of information with that. So let's say we're all happy, we want to ready to continue, we can click on and we want to view this information first. The client can click on download PDF so they can have a hard copy of that in PDF. If they want to decline it, they can do that or they can click on one or two accept proposal buttons. So I'm going to click on accept. Now what's going to show up here now is the quote roller e-signature option. So the very first thing is you have to check their box. Next is you have to type in their name. And then with their mouse, you have to draw their signature. Ah, sorry about that. Try it once again. I know it might have asked best, but that's how the signature option works. And then you click sign. And then once it's been signed, now this proposal is considered into the accepted status. And your client will receive this message at the top if they have any problems to contact or questions to contact you. And now, from your client's point of view, they're done. So what I'm going to do here now is go back to the proposal overview and press F5 on my keyboard to update this page because we made all these, we signed it and everything. And then, of course, we have, we know who was created. We know when it was sent. We know there was an expiration date. We know the current status, and we know the, the total cost that was associated with that. Then we have the different tabs here. First is we have the Discuss with Client. So remember that question that we use for the Discuss button? Well, if we want to contact the client back, all we have to do is just type in this message, click Post, and then they will receive an email message about the question, about the reply. We have the internal notes option. This is where you can put in internal notes about this individual client or individual proposal that would be only seen by you as the account owner or by your team members. And then we have analytics. And in analytics, we break this down by by client and by section. First is by client, as we know um, this client, Sean, has viewed, opened the proposal. We have viewed the different sections that we have created. 
Then we have the sections that will basically uh, break this down by pie graph of how much time was spent individually on each individual section. And this is a really good method in order to show how much time you have spent, people, your customers have spent. And the reason for this, let's say, for example, you have a, a series or you've seen a trend of clients spend a lot of time on one individual section. Well, what you might want to do is thinking about that is splitting that out information out or maybe um, shortening that individual information if it's possible. And then finally, we have the history. And the history will show you everything that happened with this individual proposals. We know that was created and what was changed and it was sent and then it was viewed and commented and accepted everything about this individual uh, proposal is in there as well. Back here at the top, we have preview the proposal, of course, as you can preview it once again. Now, because we, we know that our client has accepted and signed it, when they click on download PDF version, you'll have their signature wherever you added that signature block. We have the copy as a new, so if you really like this proposal and want to send it out to another client, you can simply click on that and it'll take you back to step one. Um, if you made, uh, if you created your own uh, proposal for the first time, or if you made significant changes to step three, which is that content section, you can convert this into a template as well. And then finally, we have the export pricing table to Excel, and this is all our step two, which is our pricing table that we created. And this is a really good option if you wanted to create a type of an invoice uh, for your um, business as well, simply by clicking on export pricing table to Excel. So that's Quote Roller pretty much in a nutshell. I know that we talked a lot about today about some different options. We talked about the clients of who we're sending it out to. We talked about the catalog of what we're sending. We talked about the templates, the content, and the look and the feel of proposals. And then using all those options, we went through proposals and created a proposal, sent it out, reviewed it, and then looked at all the options with that. I'm going to go ahead and open up now to the live Q&A session, so you can be welcome to use the quote roller uh, questions and answer box, and we'll kind of take it from there. While we're waiting for, que waiting for questions to come in, I'm going up to settings here up at the top, and this is one thing I recommend that you do as well, is go through all these different options. First is the company section. Make sure you go through and set all this up, including your company settings here called base currency, your price format, your paper sizes, your date format, and what, more importantly here, your time zone. And you want to make sure that this is set correctly as this is the, the how your statistics and your analytics will be based upon. So if you have the set incorrectly, you might have be a few hours off. So just make sure that's set correctly. Down at the bottom here, we have proposal options, including your proposal numbers and number formats. The team options under settings. So uh, we are a team type of an environment or software is set for teams. Uh, so you can think about that as well. We have the logos and colors here. You can upload your own custom logo. That will show up here on the upper left. And if you're using the classic uh, version of the uh, change design for your templates, we also have the background color. You can modify that information as well. We have the accounts and payments, of course. This will give you all the information of what's going on with your account and current, the, the current plan that you are, the users that you have in your monthly total, plus give you some options regarding our monthly and annual billing. And also, you can add your coupon. Uh, because you have attended the live webinar today, you will be receiving an email from us with a coupon. So definitely be on the lookout for that. We have our labels and emails options. So the lots of different things in here. Um, you can modify this information of what is shown to your customer. So let's say, for example, you don't like the word accept proposal on the accept proposal button. Well, you can modify this to whatever that you'd like as well. So lots of different things. You can really configure it for your own specific business or your own specific needs as well. Uh, also, we have integrations, of course. So these are all the integrations that we have available within our quote roller system. Definitely take a look at all those. You might be able to work with uh, one of ones that you have already now. And then we have referrals as well. So if you want to become a referral partner, definitely go ahead and take a look at that. There's a question, are you looking at solutions for more complex pricing options? Price uh, reduced per unit or is volumes increase or do a more complex Excel spreadsheet? Yes, Brian, thank you. Um, that's something that our teams are actually working on right now for development-wise. And what we're thinking about doing is things called multiple pricing tables and have a lot more configurable options with that. We're hoping to have a, a beta version of that within uh, the uh, second quarter of 2014. Thank you, Brian. Excellent question.
question, is there a way to remove a section title from the proposal? It seems redundant for some cases. Uh, yes, Daniel, that could be done with custom CSS if you want to remove all of them. Uh, we don't have an option to remove them specifically, uh, but we do have that option under custom CSS. Uh, one of the things that you know we strive here at Quote Roller is to provide you with self-help. Um, so on the main Quote Roller screen, as you scroll down, down on the lower right-hand side down here, we have this link called FAQ. And when you click on that FAQ, this will take you to our FAQ center. And we have about 90 to 90, 95 different FAQs that you can view and you can look through to show them how to use the system. Under the Getting Started option, we have a full user manual. You can download it of a PDF version. We have this awesome uh, our orange book to help you get started with uh, creating sales proposals. And then we have our recorded webinars that we have done in the past as well. So definitely take a look at all those different options is there. A lot of great information out there for you. But of course, you know, you know, our system can be, if you, if you do need help in the future, you know, that's why we're always here for support as well. Okay? So if you go through the FAQs, maybe just don't understand something or maybe need a different point of view, if you have any questions or concerns or feedback or comments, please log in and then in the upper right hand side, use that help slash questions button and send us an email. And what that's going to do, that's going to automatically go to our ticketing system and we'll get back with you as quickly as possible. Finally, before I let you go real quick here, I'm going to show you about our sister product called PandaDoc. And you can find it at www.pandadoc.com. And this is a new product that released a couple months ago and is, is gaining a lot of popularity. And what this is, this will allow you to create any, take any type of document, Word document, PDF document, Excel document, and upload it into system to send it out to your clients to sign or check off boxes or fill in information. Or it's really good for use for internal purposes and business purposes as well. Let's say you have an HR document that you wanted all your customer or your uh, employees to sign, this is a really good option for something like that. So definitely take a look at that. Um, we're growing every single day. And eventually what's going to happen is that PandaDoc and Quote Roller will be interconnected together to share information and so forth. So definitely take a look at that. All right, any other questions before we go? Uh, doesn't look like it. Well, once again, everyone, I'd like to thank you so much for attending our webinar today. Uh, we hope you found it informative and educational. And as always, once again, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to us using that help slash questions button. And otherwise, beyond that, have everyone have a fantastic evening and uh, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.